Warning, the following footage contains strong language, gore, and nudity. Viewer discretion is advised. Also, I am a mongoose. Yo is determined to talk to him today. Nothing will happen as long as she continues to hesitate, and putting it off will only make her suffering last longer. It's only time to show courage once again. Yo's fourth period on Thursdays is biology, and this is her one chance to see Fumanori. Because it's a required course with many students, the lecture is held in a large hall that can seat over 200, but since the room is usually only about half full, it's rarely difficult for Yo to find the seat she wants. Yo prefers to sit near the center, where it's easiest to hear the professor. Most of the students congregate in this area for the same reason. Fuminori usually sits next to her, although it's not always possible when there's no seat available. Yo has resigned herself to do this as representing the distance between them. They still always try to sit as close as possible. <laughs> the classroom isn't crowded today, so Yo is able to sit her bag next to her without bothering anyone. When the professor arrives at the usual time to start class, however, there's no sign of Fumanori. After waiting for about 10 minutes, Yo fervently casts her glance around the room. He's there. Fuminori must have come in without her noticing, because he's, he's sitting alone in the far back corner of the room. Did he miss Yo when he came in? No, it's impossible. In the first place, no serious student would willing to sit in such an inconvenient place. Feeling miserable, Yo slides her bag back over to herself. I feel so bad for this girl. Fuminori is out the door the moment the class ends, and Yo barely manages to catch up to him before he disappears down the hallway. Sakisaga-san. The son of his name, Fuminori, stiffens as though he was just bellowed at. What is it? He turns to her and says, though it seems reluctant to do so. Now they're face to face. Yo is painfully aware of how much weight Fuminori has lost. His sunken eyes and his protruding cheekbones are, far, are a far cry from the features familiar to her. She wonders whether he's under a lot of stress, or perhaps not getting enough nutrition. Maybe it's both. He looks more tense than he should be, like he's irritated or even frightened of something. His eyes move restlessly from point to point, and he refuses to look Yo in the eye. Just looking at him makes Yo's chest ache with sadness. What could have changed him so? Today she reminded herself, relighting the flame of courage in her heart. Um, I have something to talk to you about. Do you have some time? The courtyard is empty and silent. No one willing to sit on a bench and chat in the cold November air. So what is it? Don't you remember? Yo almost blurts out, but she managed to keep herself from being so blunt. Sakisaka-san, you've been acting strange recently. I'm worried about you. Maybe you're right. Well, it's happened, after all. He smiles like it's nothing, but even that stiff seems stiff and forced. He's even standing precisely one pace further away than he is used to when talking to her. Is that really all? Do you think there's something more? Yo manages to keep from flinching at the hardness in his voice. It's like you're struggling with something. Rather than answer, Saki Saka grinds his toe into the dead grass at his feet, fearing that he all, that her determination might flag. Yo let the words come as they may. It's like you're trying to bear some unimaginable weight, but the struggle is breaking you. That's how you look to me. Oh, really? 
humanoid mutters through clenched teeth, no longer even trying to deny or change the topic. This brush off is an even clearer signal of rejection than his earlier evasiveness. But Yo's determination is strong. Today, at least, she won't back down. It's times like these, she implores, trying to convey the sincerity of her feelings for him, that you need your friends. Oh! Oh yeah, that's right, that's what he sees. I really feel better about what happened to your family. But you're not alone. You have Tonokan and Omi Chan, and you have me. Yo can no longer stop the words from pouring out. She fears that if she does not release all of them, myriad emotions pent up inside, they will be lost forever. I think we can help you so that you don't have to carry everything by yourself. If we can't do anything, talk to us might make you feel a little better. I want to help you, Saki Saka-san. The others all feel the same. Stop it! Fuminori shouts, silencing Yo's entreaty. She had promised herself that she wouldn't back down, but Fuminori's expression was terrible enough to shatter her resolve. The look in his eyes is not anger or any other warm blood of emotion. It's hate. Murderously cold hate. Oh yeah, I just remembered that I still haven't given you an answer. He remembers. He remembers. Yet still he, he has treated her with such coldness. That alone is more than enough to answer for you. If his words tear her heart to shreds any further, she won't be able to bear it. I never saw you in any particular special way before. When you expressed your feelings for me, I wasn't sure how to respond. I didn't know how I really felt about you, after all. Saki Saka-san. But now I can give you a clear answer. I've had plenty of time to think it over, you know. Uh, shish kebab. I hate you. I don't even want to look at you. I mustn't cry, Yo tells herself, but to let it stop the tears from pouring from her eyes. I suppose it's too much to hope that I never see you again. We do go to the same school. So would you mind at least never talking to me again? I'm quite sick of you. How can you be so... Yo inadvertently whispers to which room twists his lips in a horrible, cruel smile. You should calm down a little. Seriously. I bet you were just egged on by Umi and Koji, right? You play at having a crush all you want. You can play at having a crush all you want, but leave me out of it. That's all Yo can take. Even after shedding tears in front of her, she absolutely refuses to let her, let him hear her cry. In his grace, would be preferable to breaking down here. So she runs off, fleeing breathlessly from the courtyard with Fuminori smiling coldly back at her. Jesus, what a dick. Umi was the first to catch sight of Yo and Fuminori leaving the courtyard. Reluctant to interrupt them, but still unwilling to leave them alone, Koji and Umi ended up watching the whole thing from the shadows. That asshole. Throughout the exchange, Umi was clearly itching to jump out and punch Fuminori in the face. Knowing her temper, Koji kept the firm of her sleeve under. Oh, there. Koji kept firm hold of her sleeve until the end. If he hadn't, she might very well have done it. Fuminori leaves after Yo. His every step seems to be taking active willpower. Koji sighs heavily into the once more empty courtyard but the bitter taste in his throat won't go away. What's wrong with him? Even for Koji, Fuminori's treatment of Yo is unforgivable. However, the first thing he feels is confusion. Koji and Fuminori are old friends, having known each other since before college. As far as Koji knows, Fuminori has never been so cruel before. There's no question that the accident changed him. And, 
We are out of time. So see you next Thursday. <laughs>